uh, vacation Bible school sign up list in the foyer. There will be a business meeting this Wednesday. Uh, Jimmy Avent, retired from the uh, Justice Court judge, they're going to have a reception uh, for him uh, this Friday from 3 to 5 at the Carrollton Courthouse. So if you would like to come to that, uh, <clears throat> be, we welcome you too. And I'd like to say uh, thanks to the men that worked in the cemetery getting the fence done yesterday. Uh, it wasn't the heat. It was those little black gnats. <laughs> that was everywhere. <laughs> they were awful. All right. Any more announcements? And I don't uh, see any birthdays and anniversaries unless somebody's got one. If you want to speak up, we'll sing to you. All right. Prayer list, Don Wiltshire, Vince and Colby Ewing, Beth Tingle, Jimmy and Barbara, Irene and Greg, John and Norma Jean, Tanya Longest, Jennifer Motzinger, Joe Cook, uh, Laura Jean Shook, Willie Ezell, Kent and Donna Winger, Carl Ricks, Bob Sow, Danny Henson, the Jack family, the Cheney family, the Roach family, the Mitchell family, Teresa James, Angela and Tammy Spence, Alan Smith, the Jack family again, Carol Chapman, Barbara Floyd, and Julia Beckwith. All right. Joe Miller, would you lead us in that, please?
finally went and washed it with alcohol. So far it hadn't missed no more. <laughs> We're on five, baby. <coughs> I look down this mountain side I can see where this road goes The shepherd is the leading moon To a place where I can grow Though it seems to be a trying time I know I have no doubt he knows what's then might be a place of perfect land. This valley is for me. I look down this mountain side I can see where this road goes The shepherd is a leading me To a place where I can grow Though it seems to be a trying town I have no doubt he knows what's best might be a place of perfect rest. This valley is for me. This valley is for me.
I've been thinking about time And where does it go? How can I stop my life from passing me by? I don't know I've been thinking about family Now it's going so fast Will I wake up one morning just wishing that I could go back? I've been thinking about lately change and let it change me so with all of my heart this is my prayer singing Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11 through 13, a, a familiar text, uh, but I think nonetheless a very fitting text for our senior graduates, but also for each one of us. Uh, the, Jer the, the prophet Jeremiah uh, wept over the state of the nation, over God's people, uh, hence the name, the weeping prophet. And in, in Jeremiah chapter 29, he has... Uh, some prophecy from God to reveal uh, to us today. Uh, and so I encourage you to follow along with me here in the reading of God's Word. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. 
thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Verse 12 says, Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Let's pray together this morning. Father, we thank you for these words of Scripture, Lord, that remind us that you have good thoughts toward us as your people. Father, you have plans for us. And your word says that when we pray to you seeking those plans, that you hear our prayers. And it says that you listen. And then it tells us in that text, Lord, that we will find you when we seek you, but not half-heartedly, but as your word says, with all. Father, this morning I pray. Father, first of all, I pray for these three graduates. Lord, as they transition now into another chapter of their lives. Father, I pray that you give them peace and comfort, direction and wisdom. Father, I pray for their families. I pray, Lord, as they continue to nurture and guide them. Father, I pray for our church. Lord, as we continue to pray for these young people, all of our young people, Father. But as we face opposition in this world, I pray, Father, that we would be strong and of good courage. Father, knowing that you have good plans, you have good thoughts for us. And, Father, it is good to know you. It is good to be able to call you, as your word says, Abba, Father, an intimate language that we speak to you through prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. We give you thanks. We praise you. And Father, it's in that precious name of Jesus, your Son and our Savior, that I pray. Amen. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2022. I want to, first of all, encourage each one of you uh, to continue to seek God's plan and will uh, for your future. This is not something that you began to seek just last week, but this is something that you have been seeking along with your family, and so I want to encourage you to continue to seek. Families, we have a lot of visitors today, and they're not here to see me. They're here for our graduates, to support them, to share their love with them, their excitement for them, and the next chapter, the next journey of their lives, and so family, I want to encourage you to continue to pray and support your graduates. And then I extend that to the church family. I want to encourage our church family to continue. Notice I didn't say start because we've already been praying for all of our graduates. Not just our graduates, but all of our young people. That we continue, church, to pray for them and that they seek God's plan their lives. Now our graduates have many obstacles in this life. They have many obstacles to face but they also have more opportunities ahead of them than than any other time in their lives. So I encourage that we continue and that we commit to pray for our graduates. Now we all certainly have plans for our lives but let's make certain church. Let's make certain graduates that our plans line up with God's plans. This morning as we unpack these three verses, I want us to first of all see that God offers us plans. Now when we think about a plan, most of the time that's not something that's just thrown together. He, it, the, here the, the, the prophet says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Now you've got to remember he's a prophet, so God is speaking not only to him, but God is speaking through him. And so when he says, I have thoughts and plans for you, he's speaking as God. He's not God, he's not, he, he's, it's not that he is God, but he's speaking as As God, as God is speaking to and through him, he says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Now that is Yahweh. That is the great I Am. The the capital L-O-R-D, Lord. The one who was, who is, and is to come. And he says, I know. He doesn't say I think. 
There's a lot of difference, church, in knowing something and thinking something. God says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. See, God has a plan for us. And church, His plan is perfect. Now we certainly make plans in our lives. We make plans for the long term future. We make plans for next week. You probably already got some plans for lunch. Amen. You probably thought about that. You've got plans for this week. You've got plans for the summer. You've probably got plans for the fall. And you've probably got plans for even Christmas. But let's make certain that our plans line up with God's plans. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 9 Solomon said, a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Now, I want to point out a word here. Let's go back to Jeremiah chapter 29, and let's look at verse 13, because I want to, one of the, one of the smallest, shortest words in this verse, but I want to point out to you how much of an important word it is. Let, let's read verse 13 again. Follow along with me here. And you will seek me, Notice the, notice the spelling of me there. That, that's not Jeremiah. That's God. And find me. But notice when. When you search for me with all your heart. Now the visitors don't know this like the church people know. But I, if I ask you how much is all. Well the church people would just say what? All. Now, if you're visiting, you probably caught on that when, when, when God's word says all, what does that mean? It's okay to say it. All. That doesn't mean a portion. That doesn't mean 99%. That's pretty good. Now, I, I can't help but, but take a moment to pick on our graduates. I, I, think, I, I think I can in love. Now, I'm not going to embarrass anyone, but... but they, they graduated in the top of their class, okay? Not, not just the top 10, but the top. Now, I, I graduated. <laughs> Praise God. By the skin of my teeth. But our seniors graduated church at the top of their class. What an honor. What, what, what an honor that we are able to sit among such elite young people. The future Christian leaders of America. It's good to know that we have some seed planted for the future. Amen. But when it tells us church to seek God with all our heart it, it doesn't just mean when it's convenient it, it doesn't just mean when it's the big monumental decision making time in life but it means all your heart so that's how we seek God's plan we follow his steps now there was a college student that was taking his end of the semester test. But it was for not only any class, but it was for his bird study class. Now, I hadn't found that one yet. But he realized that if he studied all night the night before, that he could ace the final exam and get a good grade. So he pulls what we refer to as an all-nighter, and he feels pretty good about his study material. Well, the next day he arrives at his class and the test begins. But the thing that he neglected to study was identifying certain birds by their footprint. It makes a student very angry. And he burst out yelling at his professor saying that they should not be tested on just the footprints as he is exiting, storming out of the room. 
The student is almost out of the classroom when the professor turns to him and says, what is your name? He smiles and walks over to the professor's desk, takes his shoe off, takes his sock off, puts his foot up on the desk and says, you tell me. <laughs> Sometimes life offers us things that we don't plan. You've probably, graduates, been told your whole life when you said that something was not fair, the response was probably was that life's not fair. You're beginning to experience many of these realities that you've been taught and told your whole life, and now you're beginning to see, wow. And you're almost there. You're, you're smart. But you're almost smart enough to say, my parents really know what they're talking about. Because you went through a phase in your life, you said, my parents are the dumbest people on the planet. Because you had a little freedom. You got your license. You got that freedom to be able to kind of go and explore. Sometimes life, we don't understand the plans. But we must seek God with our whole hearts. The prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 55 verse 6 said, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. There's going to come a day when the trumpet sounds and the invitation will be closed. For the church, it will be a very rejoicing time. Not for the church role, not for the church members, but for the church of God, God's children, those of us who have placed our faith in Jesus. But those that don't know Jesus, it's going to be a sad day. I encourage you to seek God's plans for your life. Because church, graduates, God offers us plans. But then secondly, I want us to see that not only does God offer us plans, but God offers us, and you've probably already figured it out, but peace. See, Satan is the author of chaos and the father of lies. But the Bible says that God is a God of order. That God is a God of order. And we're reminded here that through the prophet Jeremiah that, that God has good thoughts and plans for us. See, God offers not only just peace, but listen to this. God offers us His peace. Because if you were to think about the definition of the, of the word peace, it means the absence of war. Well, church graduates, the one thing that I've noticed in my life that sometimes I can be at peace in the middle of chaos and war. Because that comes from what Paul said, the peace of God which surpasses some understanding. Oh, there's that word again. All understanding see God's peace is like no other in John chapter 14 the gospel of John Jesus is preparing his disciples for his departure and, and he, he gives them the, the plan that he's leaving and he says I'm going to prepare a place for you and he says if I go I'll come again and you know the way and Thomas says wait a minute I, we don't know the way. You didn't, you didn't leave a map, directions, plans, and Jesus said, I am the way. And his, his disciples did not quite understand. And, and later on in John chapter 14 and verse 27, Jesus said, peace I leave with you. But then he says, my peace I give to you. And he goes on to say, not as the world gives do I give to you. And then he repeats that phrase that he already said in the previous part of John chapter 14. He says, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Graduates, you're going to face some things in the near future that you've never faced before. You're going to be given some challenges that you've never faced before. 
Now, I understand that, that now in high school that you're able to take what's called dual enrollment. And, and, and in my day, we didn't have that, thankfully, because I probably wouldn't have made it through high school. I did good just to get by with what was there already. But you've already taken some courses of action toward your degree in college. But you're going to be exposed to many things in life beyond the sheltered place of your high school. Because many of you have gone to school with people that you've known your whole lives. You've graduated with people that you've known most of your life. And for the most part, you probably don't recognize now, maybe you do, but your teachers actually cared for you, most of them, maybe all of them. But you're going to go into a place, whether it be a junior college or a major university, and you're going to be challenged by teachers and professors. And I'm going to be real honest for just a moment, okay? Not that I hadn't been before. But they're not going to care about you, they're not going to like you, and they're not going to believe like you believe, and they're not going to teach like you think. And they're not going to be looking for the answers that you think they're looking for. You say, well, what does that got to do with peace? That sounds like chaos. That's what the world has to offer, is chaos. But Christ said, I offer you peace. I want to challenge and encourage you to continue to seek God's plan and God's peace for your life because the peace of God isn't like the peace of this world. Now you will face many obstacles in the future. But you seek the peace of God when life offers you turmoil and chaos. Now many of us have recognized this and some of us maybe have not, but the world really won't give you anything other than a hard time. We must be willing to work for whatever we desire to have. I want to speak to everyone this morning. I don't want you to think, well, this is just for the graduates. No, I I don't want any of us to sit back and wait to receive what we think we... I don't even like to use the word deserve. But I hear so many people saying, I want to get the things that I deserve. You know what that is? It's reservations in a devil's hell. So you're going to sit back and wait for what you deserve. That's where you're going to end up. Don't sit back and wait for what you think you deserve to come to you. Go out and get it. Go out and seek it. Thomas Jefferson said this. If you want something you've never had, you must be willing to do something you've never done. You know, church, graduates, if you want something different, do something different. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. If you don't like something in your life, change it. The peace of God will guard your heart and mind. See, God will give us peace even when we don't know what we're doing. Now, graduates, you're you're transitioning into a different area of your life. You went from the time of your life where you didn't know anything. Then you went through a time in your life where you knew everything. And now you're coming back into the time of life where you say, well, I don't really quite understand some things. And there's going to be times in your life because you're looking at your parents thinking that they've got it all figured out. Let me let you in on a little secret, graduates. Listen to me. Everybody else don't hear this right now. But you know who does? Our Heavenly Father. So there will be many times in life where we don't know what we're doing. But what we have to do, especially in that time, is seek God's peace and God's plan. Now third and finally this morning as we prepare to close, I want you to see that God not only offers us 
Not only does God offer us a plan, not only does God offer us a purpose, uh, excuse me, peace, but there I gave it to you, God offers us a purpose. God offers us purpose. Because you can have a plan without a purpose. But I don't know if you can have a purpose without having a plan. Let's talk about that for just a moment because he says here to give you a future and a hope. Now, let, let me explain what that's not. To give you a future and a hope. Oh, I hope this works out well. Oh, I hope when I get grown and, 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 and get to a place that I'm going to be able to survive. I hope that I'm going to be able to make enough money. I hope that I'm going to be able to survive in this old cruel world. I hope that I'm going to, if you're hoping like that, stop. That's not the hope that you want to have. That, that's, that's blowing out candles. That, that's blowing out dandelions. That's putting pennies in a wishing well. That's going to the fountain and, and, and pitching money into there. Hoping and wishing. That's not what God wants for us. He spoke to and through his prophet Jeremiah. And he said, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. Church. Graduates. That is God offering us. Purpose. For this life. But what have we got to do with it? We've got to receive it. And we've got to apply it. To our lives. Daily. See a future and a hope. God has a purpose for us. See, our future is already planned. God said to give you a future and a hope. And see, God has a purpose for each one of us. But we must seek that. There was an old cowboy that was trying to buy a health insurance policy. And the insurance agent was going down the list of standard questions. And he asked him, he said, have you ever had an accident? Have you ever had an accident? Nope, never one. None? The agent said, you've never had an accident? Nope. I ain't had one, never. Old cowboy said. He said, well, you've got on this form here that you were bitten by a snake once. Wouldn't you consider that an accident? He said, heck no. He said, that varmint bit me on purpose. <laughs> Understand God's purpose. That God loves each and every one of us the same. And you think about that for just a moment. I, I want you to process that in your mind. That God loves each and us the same. Because I, I've, already, I've already mentioned our visitors this morning. And, and, and we're, we're thankful to have each one of our visitors. But you're here visiting someone special because you care for them and that person in your life and in your family. So we understand love. That compares by who that person is to us. If they're family, if they're special, if they're friends. But now let's look at the other end of that spectrum. If they're family, <laughs> sometimes you can't pick your family, can you? If they're enemies, if they people that done, if they if they're the kind of person that's done things to hurt and harm you, and you say, "Well, my my love is different." Well, listen, God's love isn't. For God so loved the world. But then it comes to a phrase in there. It says that whosoever. Now that's where we get individual. It's where we have to understand that we're on our own when it comes to our relationship with Jesus. Graduates, you've been, you've been under your, your family's protection and shelter. Your immediate family and your home, but also the ones that are here today to support and love you. But you're going to experience things in the near future that maybe you've never been a part of. 
And when you look around and you don't see family and you don't see mom and dad and, and your sisters and brothers and, and your church family, and the devil says, what are you going to do now? You've got to make those choices to say, I don't have those people here with me, but I have my Lord and my Savior. And he's got a plan for me to give me a future and a hope. So I pray this morning that not only has this message challenged and encouraged our senior graduates, but I pray for us as the congregation of God's people that it challenges and encourages each one of us to know that God has plans, God has peace, and God has a purpose. But church, we must seek them. Not with a portion, but with all. Because life in this earth, on this earth is sometimes difficult. More times than not. And you will face challenges. But know that there are many people in this room that love and care for you. There are many people, extended friends and family that love and care for you. But most importantly, there is a heavenly Father that loves and cares for you. A Satan would tell you, oh well, but you've done things that nobody knows about. So God has reservations for his love for you. Don't, don't believe that lie. God loves us with an unconditional, agape kind of love. I pray that you know him. I pray that he's your savior. And this morning as we close, I want to ask you one very important question. Are you willing to seek God's plan, peace, and purpose for your life? Because God has a special plan for you. You know what his greatest plan for all of us is? Is a relationship with him. Questions are often asked of who can be saved, the good people? Yeah. Yeah. The bad people? Yeah. The people that don't know any difference? Yeah. The people that graduated in the top of their class? Yeah. The people that just were glad to graduate? Kind of like Minnie Pearl, just were glad to be there? Yeah. God loves you. And the scripture says that we've all sinned. We've got to recognize that. And cry out to him as our Savior. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Pray with me this morning. With every head bowed and every eye closed. God's plans for us have a purpose. It's not that he just sits back and tries to figure things out as we go through life. But God is sovereign. And what that means is that God knows all things. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's with us everywhere through His Holy Spirit. Even when our parents and our grandparents can't be there, God is. That can be both comforting and convicting. But it's up to us to choose. As Joshua said, choose for yourselves whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Father, I pray that you would reveal your plan and your peace and your purpose for us each day of our lives. I pray that we would seek you with all our hearts. Casting our own wishes and our own wants and our desires aside. And seeking you and your perfect plan for our lives. Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for him coming to this earth to die for a sinner like me. Father, it's good to know that you love us. It's not that you just loved us, but you love us and you are loving us. And as your word says, you will love us for all eternity. Thank you for that. 
Forgive us of our sins. Bless our church. Especially bless our graduates as they transition in their lives. May we all be the men and women. Boys and girls. That you would have us to be. In accordance to your will. And your plan. And your timing. Father I thank you for Jesus. And it's in that precious name that I pray.